All right, perfect. So, um, hi again, my name is Linda, and I am the field acting field recruiter for United States Postal Service uh, for Bay Valley District, okay? So, um, I believe down in Cal um, we covered the area. You guys are located in Sa um, Santa Clara um, County, correct? So, that's the area that is belong to Bay Valley District. So, I'll be explaining the jobs that are available down there or nearby as well. So first of all, I do want to kind of quickly go over uh, who we are, basically. But you guys already know, you everybody who has the address in the United States will have a mail person delivering your mail. And even if you don't get, you know, certain mail, we also do deliver part uh, packages as well. So you have your own mail person, um, just like everybody else in the country does. Okay. So United States Postal Service pr provides essential service to the American public. So we are essential. Um, government branch, um, even with last year's and continuing pandemic situation, Postal Service was never closed. We were keep coming to work, everybody here was delivering mail or processing mail, or we were reporting to work as um, our duty required. And also when um, our government, couple, you know, couple years ago when our government had a shutdown going on, Postal Service employees were coming to work because we are one of those branches that just cannot shut down. Okay? So, um, average Postal Service employees in service, they average about, they, they work with us about 20, uh, 20 to 30 years. So, that's a long time. So, basically, once they start or once a lot of people start um, working with Postal Service, um, you know, they're here to stay until they retire, basically. We have, um, matter of fact, um, I'm on a hall with HR, um, hall, uh, I'm on a floor where all the HR departments at the same time, and then down the hallway, we have a labor department, and we have a, a labor um, relations specialist there. She's actually hitting her 50 years of service this year. So, that's a quite a long times of working with Postal Service. Okay, like I said, Bay Valley District covers, specifically covers following county. Okay, we cover Alameda County, Contra Costa, Napa, part of Solano, and okay? not all of them, just part, and part of Santa Clara, so any cities below Sunnyvale, okay, and then Santa Cruz County, Monterey County, and San Benito County, that's considered as a Bay Valley District, okay. Um, I know you know, some other cities like San Francisco or Sacramento, they have their own post offices and they have their own district um, as well. So basically what we do as a postal service, um, we do actually, I mean, to start out, we get to deliver. We're, we're one of those key players in um, parcel delivery company, okay? Um, and we deliver mail and packages and we are the only company, the United States Postal Service is the only company that has access to your own mailbox, okay? Even if like other companies that like are competitors like Amazon or FedEx, they have, they can deliver parcels to your uh, front doorstep, but they cannot access our, the mailboxes, okay? And they cannot touch the mail. So we're the only company that has authorization to um, deliver, handle your mail, okay? So we also issue cash at post office money orders. We also provide passport services. We also, we are a huge part of a community as well. So, you know, you will hear um, this heartwarming stories every now and then at news where, uh, you know, a, a car letter carrier kind of notices uh, uh, like an elderly person not coming to the door to get the mail and then they notify the authority and then, you know, and turns out that um, the elderly person, you know, had a heart attack at home or something. So, and then they found out and then, you know, every, was, that other person was taken to the hospital. So, like, stuff like that. We are, like, very deep into um, each other's community, right? All right. So, why does Postal Service need to hire? You know, like I mentioned, you know, a lot of the Postal employees, you know, once they start, very rarely anyone leaves, right? Why do we need to hire? It's because we have a huge number of retirements that are happening right now. Um, and also, oh, sorry. Because of the large number of retirements that are happening, a lot of the internal positions are opening up. So, you know, 
the way Postal Service works is you have to start off as an entry-level position, okay? Um, and then once you start as an entry-level position, um, once you become a regular, you guys your limit. So we Postal Service has a various different departments within the company. It's not just uh, delivering. So Postal Service, um, everything happens in house. So we have our own marketing, we have our own HR team, we have our own labor. Like I said, we have our own business team, um, business development team, and basically anything that that depart any department that is needed to run a business is internal. Okay. So if you see yourself, you know, let's say a sales position, if you're interested in sales and you want to uh, work, get a government job, postal service is a great place to start. However, you pr you will have to come in as an entry-level position, most likely a carrier or a clerk first, and then you have to wait, uh, work your way to that position that you want to reach, okay? But like I said, a lot of people are in those positions, are retiring right now, so you know that might happen a lot faster than um, you would think. Okay. So I'm going to quickly cover what kind of positions that we have, we're actually looking for right now. So it's kind of grouped in a in a similar crap. What is that? So city carrier, city carrier assistant, rural carrier assistant, and assistant rural carrier. I know it's like all sound same. They are all driving positions. So you need, of course, you need a driver license to even to apply for this position. You must been had um, driving for two or more years in the United States or U.S. territory. Okay. And also PSD sales service distribution associate, sales service distribution associate, mail handler assistant, PSD mail clerk, uh, mail processing clerk, our clerk position, they are non-driving. So if you say, if you don't have a driver license right now, or um, you know you just got your license and it hasn't been a two year, that's okay. You can apply for a clerk position and then see how, um, you know, how the clerk position will work out for you. We also have our labor custodian position. Um, since Postal Service has our own vehicle that has our logo on it, on it, we take care of it. We do the maintenance of it, so we have our automotive technician, and then also um, the motor vehicle operator and tractor trailer operator. These two are the truck drivers um, for the Postal Service. And in order to apply for motor vehicle, you need a Class B uh, CDL. And then for a tractor trailer, you need a class A CDL to even to apply for it. Okay, these are spe uh, special skill positions, and then also a maintenance mechanic as well. So we are also actually hiring all these positions that I mentioned right now. So the difference between I want to kind of go back to the carry, and I I want to spend a little bit more time here clarifying certain uh, positions. So city carrier, city care assistant falls under same job. However, city carriers start as a career position, so like a regular, like a regular employee. City carrier assistant um, start as an entry level, so non-regular employee. However, after two years or less, you get converted into a regular employee, so like converted into career. Okay. So city carrier, the the career option, the regular position is available nearby um, Santa Clara County area, but you know most of them is out in San Jose area. So it's not in every city. Okay, so this this uh, city city carrier um, regular position doesn't open in every city. It's only mostly metro uh, major metropolitan areas. So like Oakland, um, Livermore, or um, Napa area, or some of them are a little bit bigger. Like Santa Cruz is also a pretty big city, so they have a regular carrier. However, surrounding, um, you will probably find a city carrier assistant position. So they do the same function, um, basically delivering the mail and parcels to, um, to your assigned route, and then um, you start from there. Okay. And also, I don't, I don't want to discourage anybody to like, hey, I don't want to start as a entry level loser. I want to be start as a regular employee. I understand. However, you know, 
even if you start as a city care assistant position, you're not stuck as a city care assistant forever. You will get converted two years, within two years or earlier than that. Our Bay Valley District conversion rates are pretty fast. So it compares, I always compare it to our LA counterparts, LA district. So they, I've seen city care, like people staying in their city care assistant position for five or more years, but you know, or for Bay Valley district, that conversion rate is a lot faster. And we, our district actually has a, a commitment that we're gonna convert our city care assistants within two years or less, okay? So rural care assistant and assistant rural carrier, so these two positions, just like how the title kind of tells you, you deliver in rural areas. So um, I believe that you guys are located pretty down south and you guys do have a lot of rural areas. So your local post office will have a rural carrier and delivering to rural parts of the, uh, to the city. So they are, they also do same function as what, what city carriers do. They, they deliver mail um, and parcels, but rural carriers, since they have to kind of, the, the distance between each address is pretty lengthy. That's why it's rural. Um, so I'm pretty sure 100% you will always drive. So just FYI. Only difference with the assistant rural carrier, this position, I know it's like, it's so tacky that like the title is just like, they could have came up with a little bit more specific, but assistant rural carriers is considered as a rural carrier. However, you only work on Sunday, holidays, and some Saturdays if you are required. So this is a very part-time job, okay? So unless you are looking for uh, some, some part-time jobs that you can only work during the weekend, um, don't apply for this. <laughs> I'm not saying you don't, you should apply for it, but you know, just, really read the job description of what you are applying to. So that way you can just avoid certain, you know, confusion, all right? Okay, and then next is clerk positions I'm gonna go into, and then PSE Sales Service Distribution Associate, and then Sales Service Distribution Associate is the same thing because the only thing different is the title PSE. PSE stands for Postal Support Employee, okay? so. PSC Sales Service Distribution Associates are also entry level. They will come in as a non-regular and then they will get converted into a regular uh, once it's their time to get converted, okay? And then once they pass a window test, what we call window test, they become a sales service associate or sales service distribution associate who works at a po your, the post office window who sells the stamps or who accepts the package or whoever handles the business when you walk into your local post office, okay? So the window test is just basically a because you need to know the, like the, what you can accept um, in terms of like, like letter carrier, I'm not a letter carrier, I'm sorry, the parcel delivery industry wise, so like lithium batteries, so those dangerous goods. There are certain things you cannot ship, okay? Either or ale or even for by land. So you need to know what to look out for and then we will train you for that. And then once you pass the test, you will be, you will be qualified to um, become a window clerk, which is a sales service and distribution associate. But up until you actually get converted into a regular position, your job most most mostly be a distribution associate. So what they will do is they will be assigned to a local post office, so whichever post office that you're gonna get assigned to. And um, before, they will probably report to before where the letter carriers report. So usually letter carriers um, operation, it depends on the office, but it's very from 6 a.m. to 7, uh, 7 a.m. So they come in between six or seven. So the, these um, clerks will come or before that because they will also be the ones that have to receive the mail that are coming from the sorting plant, okay? The, the mail that, that needs to get delivered that day, and they're the one that are gonna um, sort the parcels out for the carrier so they can take it. They can only have to deal with the packages that only belongs to the route that they're gonna deliver to, the carriers are gonna deliver to, okay? So they're the one that's gonna kinda pre-organize the mail that they need to go out that day, 
and then and and just go from there. And also while work you're working as a distribution associate, they will train you as a sales service um, a distribution associate as well. So it, it plays a two role. Okay. Um, also the next is mail handler assistant and PSD mail processing clerk. So if you read the description here, they work at the plant setting. So we have three plants within the Bay Valley District. We have Oakland, we have one in San Jose, one, we have one in Richmond, okay? So closest to one to uh, most of the students that are in call, this call probably will be San Jose, okay? So these, this, it's a plant setting. So it's 24 seven running facility. Our plants never shut down, never shut down, okay? I heard even during some major earthquakes back in 89, this plant was still running. They, they never shut it down, okay? Um, so it will have a three different tour, meaning three different shifts. We will have a graveyard shift, okay? We will have a day shift, and we will have a shift that starts in the afternoon and goes into the um, early in the morning. Um, the only thing about that, the tour, the scheduling is everything in postal service is um, based on seniority. So even if you want the day shift, most likely you probably won't be able to get it right off the bat because it's different. It's a lot of the higher seniority people uh, want the same shift as, as you, you probably will not get it. But once you build your seniority and then if let's say there's more availability in, this, uh, in certain shift, yes, your manager or supervisor will try to work with you and then work with your schedule and then so that way you can all come to work comfortably. However, just keep in mind, um, at, when you first get hired, um, you probably won't be able to work the shift that you desire. So just keep that in mind, all right? And then the labor custodial, automotive technician, motor vehicle operator, tractor trailer operator, and maintenance mechanic, these are considered as a skilled position. So they, not that they require any previous experiences because our teams are very, very willing to um, train new, new hires. However, they, they come in as a regular employee, okay? So, so all, for these positions, you, you do have to pass a test, okay? All these, uh, all these positions that you do need to take a test. However, for the bottom four position, for the skill position, you have to pass a test and you have to go through an interview process, like review board interview. So you'll probably interview with uh, four or five people, okay? So just keep that in mind, right? But even if you have a very minimal um, experiences at, let's just say as automotive technician, just say, hey, I worked on my car a couple of times last year. I, you know, I'm not really a pro at it. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, our, like I said, our managers are very, very willing to train you, provide you on the job training as well. As long as you have the basic understanding of the job itself and, and, and you, you are willing to learn and advance yourself, then our team will take care of it and then we will train you so you can be better at it. All right? So, so these are the jobs um, that Postal Service is predominantly looking for right now. And if you need more information about this, um, I think I've provided Jacqueline um, a, a, like a kind of guide and have more information in there so you can always um, look, at, look for that guide. So I'm going to move on to benefits. I think I'm running over a little bit. So I'm not going to read everything over, but you can all, always just um, look at it. And also this will, information will be part of that guide. So we, again, we are a federal agency. So our, our benefit is a federal benefit, okay? So even if you, these are the benefits that are listed on here, they are mostly for regular employees. So once you get, even if you start as a non-regular, once you get converted into a regular, you will start, let's say, earning the payout holidays and all that. However, even as a non-regular employee, you will get health dental vision insurances, okay? You will still get um, your um, sick, sick leave, okay? And the night differential, so if you work at a plant and you're working at a graveyard shift, you will get paid a night differential and stuff like that, okay? So it's not all of them, but like for non-regulars, non but it's, it, 
you will learn more once you get hired and then during orientation and they will we'll have a, like a benefit specialist presenting to you during orientation, okay? Um, so, and I, one thing that I really, really want to highlight is the career de development training. So, like I said, Postal Service handles everything in-house, meaning we have the, all the departments that are required to run a business is within the Postal Service, okay? You all, you know, managers, postmasters, marketing team, finance, human resources, IT positions, et cetera. Indeed, we have our own lawyer team. We have our own medical unit. We have our own nurse and doctors within the Postal Service. So that's, that just tells you everything, okay? And like I said, a lot of, lot of people, a lot of employees who are occupying those um, some internal positions are retiring. They are ready to go or they already have left. So once, if there's an opening, it's going to open to the current employees first. It opens up to internal employees first. So all you have to do is get your foot through the door as a city care assistant or a rural care assistant or whichever clerk position that um, and then come in and you'll work your way up through it, okay? And then you will get there. As long as you have means, there, means to get to some place, you will get there. Postal Service does not um, discriminate. We do not um, push other people down. We do not block people from promoting themselves. I'm trying to get promoted. So, you know, and we have a very strict federal guideline to follow, you know, in terms of that. So, you know, and, and one good thing about it is, I know you guys are all in your college and everything, but we don't really, once you get to the point that you're interviewing for, let's for a marketing specialist position, we're not going to ask you to have a marketing degree. You, we're not going to require, I mean, of course, like for a nurse and uh, nurse, lawyer, and those very, very special um, positions, yes, you will need those uh, associated degrees. However, for marketing, finance, or even for HR, they, they will not require you to hold that um, degree, that related degree. So just a heads up on that part, okay? okay? All right. So I'm going to quickly move on. So how the requirements of to work for Postal Service. You must be 18 years old or higher, okay? Um, we do not ask how old, um, how higher, like old you are right now, because you, all you have to do is at least 18. If you are in your 60s, welcome on board, as long as you can pass all the required background and then the employment required that's listed on here, and then you can do the, all the duties that the, the job that you applied is asking for, um, we're not going to we're not, it doesn't really matter how old you are right now, as long as you are older than 18 right now, okay? Since we are a federal agency, you must be a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident, okay? This is a must. You cannot work for government, especially federal government, with a work visa from a different country. So unfortunately, you have at least to be a permanent resident to work for us, okay? Must reside in the U.S. for five years, um, must be able to pass a background, the drug is currently suspended, hint, hint, here. Um, I heard um, on the previous presenter said the marijuana part. Um, yes, we're, I know California is allowing that regulation. Um, you know, we passed the law before, but we are under federal law. So once the drug test gets initiated again, um, it, anything that is not, um, basically okay in federal law wise will get flagged and you probably will fail your drug test for that. So just FYI on that, but right now due to COVID, due to pandemic, the drug is um, paused. So we're only looking for um, the background check part, okay? And again, for driving position, you must have a driving history within the United States or U.S. territory for two years, okay? And this is for males only, and this is for every federal agency, not just for, um, Post office for males who are born in the United States or immigrated to the United States between um, under the age of 26. So anybody who immigrate, immigrated to the United States under the age of 26 or you were born in the United States, you are required to sign up for selective service. This is for drafting purposes. So if you, any reason you just need to draft start drafting civilians, that's the register that they're going to use. And for if you need to, if you want to work for any federal agency, 
not just post office, FBI, CIA, whichever, department of whatever, um, they're going to ask for your solicit service number or your, your register for it. So um, I cannot tell you more detailed information about it, but this is one of the things that we, we have to follow under. So if you have more questions about it, so please visit this site right here, sss.gov, three ss.gov, and then they have a very detailed Q&A sections over there. All right? So I'm gonna- Thank you, Linda. Yeah, I'm gonna- we appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, we have some questions sure. for you. Uh, go right ahead, Amelia. Yes, thanks so much for sharing those exciting opportunities with us. Here's a question from both Sharon and Frank. Do you work with candidates that have learning challenges or physical disabilities? Can any accommodations be made for them? So that is not up to me. So if you have a, a existing disability, when you fought, when you are filing your application, there's going to be a section where you can indicate your disability. Okay. Um, you have to uh, indicate while you are filing your application. And once you do, um, it's going to actually go straight to our labor department first before it comes to hiring department, it goes to labor and then labor will reach out to you and then they're gonna um, set up an interview and then about what kind of accommodation we can uh, provide and you know, all that. And they determine um, after they have that interview. And then once they give us the, like a good to hire, this is the, this is the agreed accommodation that we're gonna provide, then we start hiring from there. But you have to file your application indicated, indicating that you have a certain disability first. Very good, thank you. And one more question from Erica. That's awesome that so many employees stay with USPS for so many years. What's your favorite part about working for USPS? Um, great question, thanks for asking that. Um, my favorite part is definitely the mobility, definitely the, the growth that I, I can see myself going into. You know, my goal, I actually started as off as a city care assistant too. I carried mail in, in my neighborhood. Um, I carried mail and I got a great opportunity to come out to the HR because, um, you know, I show them what I can do. Um, and because we also have our internal career fairs as well, you know, so I went to the, one of those internal career fairs and I met um, the manager that was willing to um, give me an opportunity and and I came to the HR department as a hiring specialist, and then I got, I became uh, um, the field recruiter, and it just, and that all happened within three years. Okay, I, that all happened within three years, and to be honest, that's pretty fast. So it's definitely the room to move up. As long as I am, you know, and and if I, let's say, out of the blue, I want to go back to operation and learn how to run a a, a postal service operation, like at a post office, I can apply for a supervisor job at like at a post office, and then go become a post, uh, supervisor, and then learn the operation from there. So there is a, so many different ways that I can go. I'm not limited to a one position. So that's the one thing I really, really love about working for postal service. Thank you. 